rising from the Saharan sands, Niger, global shifts, and the dawn of a new world order. By DD Geopolitics. Published, the 10th of August, 2023. In the complex mosaic of international geopolitics, recent events in Niger stand as potent symbols of a world in flux, a gradual, but profound, transition towards a multipolar landscape. The Niger coup, juxtaposed with the Russia-Africa summit in St. Petersburg and the reactions it elicited from global giants, tells a story of resistance, aspiration, and evolving alliances. This unfolding chapter, in defiance of the entrenched narrative of Western hegemony, signals a world where the global South, emboldened by superpowers like Russia with their anti-colonial legacies, is ready to carve its niche. This narrative heralds a time when nations, previously re-signed to the sidelines, step forward to actively mold their futures, challenging long-standing dictates and forging new alliances anchored in mutual respect and shared visions. Through this piece, we journey into the heart of these transformative developments, understanding them against a rich backdrop of historical, political, and cultural interplay. The setting. Beyond the immediate tremors of the Niger coup lies a much larger narrative, one of shifting alliances and emerging counter-narratives. The West, once a monolithic titan steering global events, is witnessing seismic challenges to its previously uncontested dominion. The St. Petersburg, Russia-Africa, summit wasn't merely an isolated diplomatic endeavor, it was a clarion call, a vivid demonstration of a world reshaping its affiliations and aspirations. A unique alchemy was at play as African leaders, representing a diverse continent rich with history, potential, and ambition, converged in Russia's cultural heartland. This wasn't just an acknowledgement of Russia's growing influence, it was also an assertion of Africa's own evolving geopolitical agency. In an era where NATO's once assumed invincibility in places like Ukraine begins to crumble, where the weight of the West's neo-colonial endeavors begins to truly be felt, the Global South is seeking new avenues, new partnerships, and a new voice. The mere fact that a country, ensnared in its own military and geopolitical struggles, could host such a momentous event underscores a broader geopolitical recalibration. The West's dismissive attitude towards the summit, juxtaposed against its earnest lobbying efforts, speaks volumes about the underlying anxieties. The sands of the geopolitical desert are shifting, and events like the Niger coup and the Russia-Africa summit are the dunes that hint at the larger movements beneath. The chessboard shifts, Russia's play. In the strategic game of global politics, Russia's orchestration of the summit unveiled not just a countermove to the West's hegemonic maneuvers but a clear divergence from the playbook. The gathering wasn't merely a diplomatic exercise, it was a revelatory showcase of Russia's legacy, divergent from the Western trajectory that remains haunted by its colonial past. While the West grapples with the phantoms of its imperial endeavors, from the ruins of the African slave trade to modern-day neo-colonial footprints, Russia presented itself as a nation unburdened by such shadows. Drawing from its Soviet-era archives, Moscow reminded the world of its history of solidarity with African nations during their most tumultuous times. This wasn't merely nostalgia but a crafty juxtaposition, highlighting Moscow's consistency in aligning with the underdogs in their battles against imperialist leviathans. The deliberate evocation of the Patrice Lumumba People's Friendship University was no mere sentimentality. It was a potent symbol of Russia's enduring commitment to the cause of anti-imperialism. This academic bastion, named after the iconic Congolese leader, who symbolized resistance against Western dominion, encapsulated Russia's message, Moscow stands with Africa, not as a colonizer or exploiter, but as a genuine partner in progress. Furthermore, Russia's overtures went beyond mere politics. The discussions ranged from partnerships ensuring African food sovereignty, exploring alternative grain deals, and establishing new logistical routes for food and fertilizers, to a plethora of other collaborations spanning trade, culture, education, science, and security. In essence, Russia presented a multifaceted engagement blueprint, divergent from the West's often singularly exploitative agenda. 
While the summit was an embodiment of Russia's vision for Africa, the undercurrents of the Niger coup spoke volumes. The events in Niger were not isolated ripples but reflections of the larger waves emanating from the paradigm shift Russia was championing. As Niamey bore witness to protests adorned with Russian flags, the symbolism was hard to miss, Africa, looking beyond its former colonial masters, was finding resonance with Moscow's narrative of mutual respect and partnership. The Echoes from Niamey Niger, in its recent turbulent episodes, has become emblematic of the very shift that the Russia-Africa summit crystallized. The streets of Niamey, reverberating with chants and bustling with spirited demonstrators, offered a tableau vivant of Africa's burgeoning determination. The sight of Russian flags unfurling amidst the Sahelian winds wasn't a mere spectacle. It was a testament to the continent's pivot, and Africa charting its own destiny, drawing inspiration from powers that dared to defy the status quo. The denunciation of military ties with France wasn't a mere diplomatic recalibration, it bore the weight of centuries-long history, a history scarred by colonial exploitation and the persistent, shadowy webs of neo-imperialism. The hunter's decision, executed with such precision and swiftness, conveyed a resonant message, the era of Western paternalism in Niger, and perhaps wider Africa, is waning. Moreover, the happenings in far-off Ukraine played a symphonic prelude to Niger's stance. Russia's audacity in the face of the NATO juggernaut didn't just reverberate across the icy steppes of Eastern Europe. It echoed across the arid landscapes of West Africa, instilling hope in nations like Niger. The defiance showcased in Ukraine offered a blueprint, a beacon if you will, suggesting that even smaller nations, when driven by conviction, can muster the courage to counter the overreaching tentacles of global superpowers. The Africa of today, as reflected in the spirit of Niamey, no longer aspires to be a mere pawn in the West's geopolitical chess, it seeks to be the master of its own narrative, forging ties based on respect, sovereignty, and mutual advancement. Gallic Predicament In the heart of the Sahel, France finds itself ensnared in a web of its own historical weave. For years, the allure of Niger's golden sands, not for their aesthetic beauty, but for the uranium they concealed, governed Paris-Africa policy. Yet, the tides of Nigerian sentiment now pose unprecedented challenges for the French strategy. The cityscapes of Niamey and the murmurs in the countryside don't speak of a Francophile Africa, but one that is restless, weary, and desiring change. Paris, with its grand Haussmannian boulevards and storied history, may perceive its presence in the Sahel as a continuation of its grand civilizational outreach. Yet, on the streets of Niger, this narrative finds few takers. The popular support for the coup, a crescendo of voices yearning for autonomy, was a clarion call to the erstwhile colonial powers that the narratives of your hold little currency in today's Africa. Then, there's the conundrum of Ikawas. Ordinarily, the regional body would act as a bulwark against such military upheavals, perhaps with a subtle nudge from powers like France. But this time, the geopolitical tapestry is more intricate. The logistical quandaries confronting ECOWAS aren't just about moving troops or drafting resolutions, they symbolize the shifting sands of African geopolitics, where old norms are questioned, and new paradigms emerge. France, thus, doesn't just grapple with a political hiccup in Niger. It stands at the cusp of a continental renaissance, striving to decipher where it fits in this renewed African dream. The Regional Resonance Algeria, with its vast stretches of the Sahara and a history marred with struggles against colonial vestiges, emerges as a silent yet formidable player in the Nigerian tableau. While many looked to Algiers with bated breath, expecting the ripple of military boots to echo from its corridors of power, Algeria remained resolute in its time-honored stance of non-interference. Such a principle isn't merely derived from diplomatic expediency, but from a deep-seated ethos that understands the scars left by external diktats. However, to view Niger's dramatic turn merely as an isolated act of defiance would be to grossly misinterpret the rising rhythms of Africa. Indeed, this coup, 
in its essence and audacity, isn't an insular event, it echoes the collective heartbeat of nations yearning to shake off the chains of neo-colonial subjugation. It's a manifestation of a broader geopolitical landscape where Western hegemony no longer casts its long, unchallenged shadow. Enter the dragon and bear of the East, China and Russia, not as colonial overlords donned in new garb, but as champions of a multipolar reality, a new world order where the discourse is decentralized. In this budding paradigm, nations like Niger aren't mere pawns in a global chessboard but sovereign entities, actively determining their destiny. They seek not just resources or alliances but recognition, respect, and a rightful place in the concert of nations. The American Gamble In the midst of this geopolitical tempest, the mighty United States, traditionally the self-styled orchestrator of global events, has chosen to tread with a marked caution. This isn't the familiar assertive Uncle Sam, rather, we witness an America recalibrating, gauging the new currents, and seeking the right foothold in the rapidly shifting sands of Africa. Even amidst this self-imposed restraint, the tendrils of Washington's influence remain unmistakable. Enter Victoria Fuck the EU Newland, a renowned baker and co-orchestrator extraordinaire, well versed in the intricate ballet of international power dynamics. While her visit to Niger might, at a cursory glance, seem like standard diplomatic fare, the underlying message was transparent. Washington is deeply unsettled by the prospect of Russia's Wagner Group, the enigmatic private military force that has given NATO sleepless nights from Ukraine to Belarus and across Africa, further expanding its African footprint. However, in a twist replete with dramatic irony, Niger's new guard displayed an almost dismissive apathy to Newland's overtures. The very reluctance of the coup leaders to engage in discourse with a key emissary from the world's once foremost superpower, was more than mere diplomatic posturing. It was a profound commentary, a litmus test, of the evolving matrix of trust, allegiance, and influence in the Sahel. The tectonic plates of global geopolitics aren't just shifting, they're being reshaped, challenging the once unassailable dominance of the West. Some final musings. As we gaze upon the ever-evolving tableau of global geopolitics, Niger emerges not as an isolated narrative but as a beacon, illuminating a new dawn in the annals of international relations. From the murmurs in the bustling streets of Niamey to the hallowed chambers of the Russia-Africa summit, a chorus of voices rises, demanding a recalibration of global alliances and affiliations. This symphony, resonant with echoes of anti-colonial legacies championed by superpowers like Russia, heralds a world where in the global south, long subjugated by the tales of Western dominance, awakens to its own agency and potential. Gone are the days where the script of international discourse was penned solely in the capitals of the West. Today, countries such as Niger ink their own narratives, inspired by new partnerships formed on the pillars of mutual respect, shared visions, and intertwined destinies. In a world racing towards multipolarity, Niger's stance is symbolic of an epochal transformation. It signifies the crumbling vestiges of an old world order and the audacious birth of a new paradigm. As nations previously pushed to the periphery stride confidently onto the main stage, the once indomitable Western hegemony finds itself at a crossroads. Will it clutch onto bygone eras, or will it evolve to engage with a world that seeks cooperation over subjugation, dialogue over dictate? In the heart of Africa, from the dunes of the Sahara to the waters of the Niger River, an indomitable spirit stirs. It's a spirit reflective of a world in flux, of histories being rewritten, and futures being reimagined. As we delve deeper into the heart of these transformative developments, one fact remains irrefutable, as the sun sets on the age of unilateralism, a new epoch, echoing with the aspirations of nations like Niger, is on the horizon. In this dawn, Every nation becomes a storyteller, and every alliance a testament to the shared dreams of a more equitable and multipolar world. As we step beyond the shadows of the cave, let's remember that the world outside is vast, intricate, and ever-evolving. Like the prisoners of Plato's allegory, we too must seek the light, challenge our preconceptions, 
and embrace the transformative narratives unfolding before us. Until next time, keep looking beyond the cave, and may your musings guide you towards greater understanding. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media App and Barglobal.net. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. It does help support our productions. Also, please download the BG Media app to access the best works of the world's authors rendered in audiobooks, along with great experience through music, podcasts, and vodcasts. Thank you.